Hey guys, Harsh here back in the video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use this ESP8266 module or otherwise known as Node MCU and use it with a DST11 sensor over here. So as you can see, it is a quite tiny sensor and this video is actually very much compatible with your DST22 sensor. So all you have to do is just change a few bits in the code and that will work with the DST22 sensor as well. And I have also made the video with the ESP32 board. And as you can see, this is the board right over here. It is basically the same thing. If you have watched that video, just uh, make sure that you connect the DST sensor to the right pin and upload that code straight to this ESP8266 board and that will work just fine. But in this video, for fresh starters, I am going to show you how you can use that. So let's get started. The first thing that you may notice on the ESP32 are the pins over here. So as you can see, there are no 5 volt pin on this ESP board over here because this is a 3.3 volt board. So it will only operate at 3.3 volts. That doesn't really affect this sensor at all because you may have seen this sensor being used with Arduinos and powered by the 5 volt supply, but this will also work on 3.3 volts. So that's pretty nice. So let's first connect our ground pin, which is labeled as GND over here as you can see. And that will obviously go to the ground on the Noel MCU. In any ground pin you can connect it. I am just going to connect it over here, just like so as you can see. Now we'll connect the VCC pin, which will be our positive power supply. And that will go to the 3.3 volts pin on the ESP32, which is I think right over here, just like so. Now we'll connect a data pin and this is by far one of the most confusing thing I have seen in ESP8266 board. So the thing is actually if you look at the board over here as you can see all the pins are quite nicely labeled as you can see D0, D1, D2, D3 and so on. Also on the other side you can see but they don't actually represent anything if you look at the code. I am not sure why they did that. Probably there would be some reason, but I'm not sure. If you look at the ESP32 board, then you can see we also have the same nomenclature with D and followed by a number. So that will be our GPIO pin, which will be used in the code. So as you can see, if I were to connect it to D13 over here or D27 or any other pin, I will just write in 27, 13 or whatever pin and we'll connect it. But on the ESP8266, we have a different case. So the numbers printed on the board over here and the actual GPIO pin are completely different. So for example, I have only remembered one pin, the D2 pin. You may assume that this is the GPIO pin number two, but it is actually GPIO pin number four. So if you're struggling with your code, just make sure that you check the GPIO pin out of the node MCU over here because these pins will not help you at all. So I will be connecting it to D2, but in the code we will use four because this is actually the GPIO pin number four. That's it for the connection with the node MCU and the DST11 sensor. Now we will plug the micro USB cable into the slot over here, connect it to our laptop and program it. Okay, so we are in our Arduino IDE to upload this code. But before we do that, first we need to make sure that our IDE can actually program our Node MCU because by default it can only program Arduino boards, obviously, because this is Arduino IDE. So, what you have to do is just go to the file options over here and then click on preferences. This will open up this window over here. And in this window, what you have to do is just paste this link over here. I will give it in the description box below in the additional boards manager ul section and if you have any other code such as i have the esp32 one here as well you can just separate them by a comma over here as you can see and once that is done we can just go ahead and click on ok now we'll open up the boards manager which is this option over here as you can see the second one and in the filter error search option you have to type in esp8266 and you will get this option over here esp8266 by esp8266 community just click on install. I'm getting this remove option because I have already installed it. So this will install the all the boards and the libraries related to it as well. And once that is done, restart your IDE. And now we can finally go ahead and upload this code. Now talking about the code, first as you can see, we have included our library which is dht.h. And to get this library, what you have to do is just go to the library section over here and type in dht11. Make sure that there are no spaces and scroll down. So we'll find this library over here, which is DHT sensor library by Adafruit. As you can see, this works for both DHT11 and DHT22 sensors. So just again, click on install. I'm getting this remove option because I've already installed it. Now in this section over here, we have defined our pin and our type. So as you know, I have connected it to pin number D2, which is actually named as GPIO pin number four. So we'll use the four over here. And obviously our type, it is DHT11. Obviously, if yours is 22, you can just 
replace the 11 by 22 just like this over here now we will define it so this way the library know what type of sensor and in what pin we are going to use it then the setup function we are going to initialize the serial monitor and start our dst function over here as you can see now comes the main function which is the loop function as you can see we have added a delay of 2000 millisecond which turns out to be two seconds so every two seconds we will be getting the data from our sensor then three floating point variable because as you know temperature is always measured to the first decimal so 34.5 36.5 so values beyond the point cannot be stored in integer type it can be only stored in float that's why we are using float so we'll use the predefined function that is dht dot read temperature and if you pass a parameter such as false that means it will give the readings in celsius and if you pass the parameter true that means it is going to print in fahrenheit and you can just leave it like this and it will by default print in celsius but i have just given it over here for your future references it also gives us the humidity so same again as the temperature it is dst dot read humidity and nothing to pass here all the values will be stored in tc tf and hu so temperature in celsius temperature in fahrenheit and humidity so we'll print them accordingly so first we'll print the temperature in c temperature in fahrenheit and then humidity obviously it is in percentage now we'll select our board and com port so all you have to do is just go to this option over here select boards and ports and you don't have to type in here ESP8266 because that won't turn up anything like so as you can see it doesn't show anything like that what you have to do is just type node MCU so you will get these three options over here mine is the node MCU 1.0 ESP12E module so I will just select that and the COM port over here when you connect your ESP go to your laptop it will show up right over here so so in my case it is connected at com5 obviously if you are connecting it in your computer it may be different so just click on ok now all you have to do is just click on this button over here which will first compile the sketch and upload it to our board so as you can see now it says done uploading we can finally open up our serial monitor because as you know i'm printing this on the serial monitor don't want to make this project any more complicated so just click on over here as you can see it is showing serial monitor so click on it and after some time as you can see we are now getting the readings so temperature 33.3 degrees celsius 91 fahrenheit or almost 92 fahrenheit and humidity is at 79 and hovering above 80 percent so to make sure that your sensor is working all you can do is just lightly blow on the sensor so i will just do that and as you can see immediately the temperature jumps up and we get a very high amount of humidity so that is how you can get the temperature readings in different uh, formats and also the humidity from your dst11 sensor so that's how you can get the dst11 sensor reading via the esp8266 model and use it in your iot project so thanks for the video guys hopefully you enjoyed it and if you have any doubts or comments regarding this video you can comment down below i will try to answer them as soon as possible and also the circuit diagram and the code are in the description so you can check that out so until then i will see you all in the next one.